Believe it or not, there used to be a time where larger corporations, institutions, and governments had a greater measure of trust from consumers and constituents, largely because of higher ethical bar that was set by public relations professionals. Well, times have changed. Let's talk about PR in an alternative facts world with our special guest, Kamala Boyd, next on The Brink. Welcome to The Brink. You're joining a group of entrepreneurs, brand makers, business owners, decision makers, power brokers, and risk takers, where we discuss business and marketing issues with insightful solutions. This is The Brink with your hosts, Russell Sales and George Cartwright, reminding you that your business is either on the brink of extinction or distinction. Welcome. How are you, sir? Man, I'm good. How are you? Doing great, man, on this Thursday. It is Thursday. It seems like these weeks are flying by. Now, I know we have been in for a very a long time, probably like 53 days and counting. I'm not counting, though. <laughs> but... <laughs> It is Thursday. This week is flying by. And that's good. That's a good thing. That good is. Thing. That is. And I want to welcome our um, viewers and our listeners to the brink. This is your daily business leadership and digital marketing podcast with your host. He's George Cartwright. I'm Russell Sales, where today we have a very special guest joining us to provide some perspective on public relations and uh, the business of messaging. So we're going to jump right to it and Let's get to uh, it and talk about Kamala Boyd. She's out of Atlanta, Georgia. Uh, she's an executive public relations advisor and educator who has provided expertise to organizations on effective PR tactics, including internal and external communications, crisis and digital communications, rele uh, media relations and brand strategy for over 20 years. She specializes in leading cross-functional teams for K2 through 20 communications. And with a combination of creativity and team support, several of her social media strategies have gone viral and enhanced brand e equity at Clark Atlanta University. Kamala is currently a uh, faculty in the Department of Arts and Humanities at Georgia State University per per Perimeter College and currently teaches public speaking and media culture and society. We are indeed honored to have her. She's a friend of ours, of ours an old friend of ours. Um, so with that said, Kamala Boyd, welcome to The Brink. Thank you. It's a pleasure to be here. Absolute pleasure. Uh, before we start really getting into this, I want to say something. It's yeah. always a pleasure when your friends want to hear what you have to say. Uh, it's, it is. It absolutely is. It's an honor and a pleasure. Uh, we have known each other since childhood. Yeah. And um, sh yes, Shiloh Academy <laughs> in Chicago, 70th in Michigan, um, there, that's where it began. And one thing we have to say uh, before we go any further is the bonds that they taught us there 30, 40 years ago are still mm. very strong. And that is something to be honored mm. uh, and something that we can never go and say doesn't mean much. Uh, our bonds are strong. There was never a doubt in my mind that I wouldn't come on the show and talk. So thank you very much, guys. Yeah, we appreciate you. Thank you for coming. Well, that's an awesome shout out to our our those who have passed the baton, and we continue to mm -hmm. run with it and pass right. it on as well. So and show the next group what they got to do. That's right. Absolutely, mm -hmm. absolutely. How have you been holding out during this whole COVID nineteen thing? Well, it is a change. People like me, we uh, we were used to mingling in public. And so all of my efforts now have been on video and calls. And what I will say is um, this time is interesting in that I think I'm working a little bit harder from home. <laughs> now, hard work. Okay, hard, nothing wrong with hard work. There's absolutely nothing wrong with hard work. But one day I sat down, I started work. One thing, I taught two classes and closed out with my, my day career. 
And uh, I literally worked from 10 to 10. Mercy. Uh, at home. Now, yes. the beauty of that is that you've got the refrigerator, you've got <laughs> your cell phone, you're by yourself, you can, you know, you don't have to worry about how you look. But um, the uh, part of this, I don't think we should ever get used to is that this was not the plan. So people who work from home, this is fine for them. They, th right. This is what they signed up to do. So we have a number of people who telework, but those of us where that's not necessarily an option for the type of career we have, we don't want to get used to doing this. Mm -hmm. um, the mm -hmm. world and the economy is built for people, some people to stay home and work and some people to go in offices and work. Our supply chains have been affected by the fact that we are all staying home now. So mm -hmm. there are a number of things. There's no advantage. There are some advantages in that maybe we've had some time to sleep. We could have some time to relax and not worry about how we look. So to speak. Commuting has commuting, changed. Commuting has changed. You've <laughs> saved on gas. Uh, the prices right. of gas have lowered. Um, insurance companies are reimbursing because we're not driving. So all of those things, right, that's the beauty of it. My mother uh, received a reimbursement from her insurance agent and wow. we kind of laughed about it because she's retired. She's like, where was yeah. she really going in the first yeah, place? Yeah. But right, right. Even you got a discount. Yeah. But let's keep in mind that's one side of this, but the world and the economy is just mm -hmm. not meant for us to do this. But we have to honor the fact that we want to stay alive and stay well and we want our loved ones to do that. So there has to be, or we're figuring it out as we go. But today, I'm, it's a happy day. I get to talk to somebody. I get to talk to y'all. Um, it's it's a great day. So let's get started. <laughs> Thank you. So, awesome, awesome. <clears throat> so tell us a little bit about what it is that you do, what you're doing now. Uh, that we right what now, did we miss I in the introduction? Nothing. Uh, <laughs> I advise, nothing, guys. You know, it's I'm still Cam now. Right, right, um, right. But uh, I advise uh, one of the larger school districts here in the state of Georgia on their media relations efforts um, and cover a number of topics. Clearly right now, um, education, this has been the first time ever that we are educating K through 20 from home and online. Wow. Everything. And everybody's school, homeschooling. Everybody's homeschooling and working. And mm -hmm. um, this is the first time that's happened. So. Part of my job, at least uh, from nine to five, is to advise the media how we're doing that and some of the pitfalls that we're finding and some of the successes that we're having. So that's that. And then in the evenings uh, when school is in session, luckily this is finals week at Georgia State. I have been teaching for the last six years. And so I get a little bit of both worlds. I get the academic world and communications and I get the practical everyday world, uh, working and being in media. So those two things combined um, are probably pretty much how I spend most of my day and sometimes my weekends. How did you uh, get drawn into the world of PR and media relations? What what was the bug? When did the bug hit you that, yeah, this is where I, I want to be? When I told my folks uh, initially that I was going to be a cardiologist, but realized I couldn't pass physics. Uh. That was pretty that much. That did it. Huh? Right. That was your pivoting right. point. That was my pivoting point when I realized that sciences in the lab were not me. But uh, right. on a serious note, I think right. um, I say this often. Uh, I had a knack for talking. Mm -hmm. Day one, I've always been a talker. <laughs> all right. Um, in school, I was a talker. So the gift I had was that I was a talker, a reader, and I was attentive. And from that, and. Um, Part of my background also, I've been able to meet a lot of folk. You know, my father's career as a minister, uh, I was always interfacing with different people. So that combination, it just seems natural to be able to uh, adapt in different uh, areas and uh, show people how to present, so to speak. That's in, in, But there's some more to that. But uh, it's almost been a natural career for me to move into um Public uh, public relations and teaching mm -hmm. they kind of go hand in hand for me and it's mm -hmm. it's it's easy for me to do. Um, as we think about public relations, some of the uh, particularly in this particular time, some of that has changed in the political arena. Uh, mm -hmm. From 1600 Pennsylvania Avenue, it used to be that we had a press secretary that uh, handled these things. That has changed over the years. What what are what do you what do you think about that? Well, let's go back. If you really look at the significance of this, there's some. There are a couple things here. Um, I think each uh, leader at the White House, um, there have always been different times that his communication, the communications team, or um, press secretaries, if you want to call them that, um, have all had different tenures and different things have happened. Uh, we probably haven't seen the, as much movement 
as we've seen in terms of replacements. We started out with Sean Spicer and now we're at somebody else. I don't even remember her name. Um, the names from previous presidents were known and probably a little more stable. I can think of Josh who was there, um, a few other people, names and faces. And we just, um, we trusted uh, their faces and what they had to say. But let's go back to, you were talking about what the changes are in alternative facts. Well, first of all, there's no such thing as an alternative fact. There are um, only facts. Uh, okay. okay. So there are no, all we've talked about that. I had to say that the title was alternative facts. There's no such thing as an alternative fact. There are just facts. Okay. Uh, we teach in PR that you can never start out a lie and derive at the truth. You can mm. certainly start out at, at a, with a lie yeah. or with a falsehood or with something that is not entirely true, but you will never ever derive at the truth when you start in that. So mm -hmm. to even give credence to something called an alternative fact is ridiculous. Okay. Now we've been sold on this because the news cycle now promotes this and we're getting sold on something. We keep hearing these buzzwords right now. The buzzwords are social distancing. Nothing wrong with all that COVID. All, you know, so we're mm -hmm. each cycle just about we get fed something. So when uh, Kelly, what's her name? And uh, Conway. Con Kelly Ann Conway came up with alternative facts as a way to deflect what we're hearing from 45. Um, that in and of itself was just. Uh, you know, a mess. Uh, it was a mess. And there's no such thing as an alternative fact at all. We have facts, we have fiction, and, and we go from there. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. As a as a professional, um, and you're, you have colleagues that, uh, you know, keep up with this type of thing, what do you think that does to the profession of PR when you have spokespeople and those who interface with the media continue to uh, drive a narrative that is not based upon facts. What do you think it does well, to PR in, in general? Ethics, and P, well, PR has always had to fight against um, what people believe. That, you know, we're spreading things that are not true, or that we're driving a um, concept for people to buy. So let's go back. So we're talking first about ethics. Okay. Mm, yes. So yeah, yeah, what absolutely. we're seeing now is, and I don't think it's anything new. We're just seeing it in front of our faces is there is a, a total um, lack of ethics and a total dismissal of ethics. Mm -hmm. So that's what the first thing. The second thing is, let's understand what PR is. I am hired to influence. And what you're hired to do is influence behavior and thoughts. That's a science, so to speak. And I'm able to do that. There are tons of ways to influence behavior and thoughts. We've got our consumer side where if you want to buy a car, you want to buy a Mercedes, you want to buy a Ford, whatever you want to buy. There's a group of people that are solely paid to convince you that this is what you need to do. You want to eat at McDonald's. There are a group of people that are paid for that. You don't want to eat at McDonald's. You don't want to eat a cow. You want to eat a um, uh, veggie food or whatever it is, we all, right. every group and every sector where that consumers use or view all have people in place to convince you because it's an economic driven society. So uh, before we even approach the fact that is it true? Is it a good thing to do? You got people who are paid in order to, we have to live. So people are paid to do that in order to live that we have to respect that right. uh, in and of itself. Now, hopefully in all of that, uh, you would um, find and work for a team or a company or organization where your representation of them, your tactics and your strategy are all something that sits on the ethical side. And you're making good decisions because you're influencing the public. Um, and so most of my peers do that. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Most of us do that. We wake, we don't wake up to support foolishness. The people at Lysol did not wake up to think they were going to have to defend what 45 said about drinking Lysol. Right. Imagine that, that, that the team of uh, the crisis team and all their whole team had denounced and spending the last week like telling people not to inject themselves with Lysol. Yes. Okay. That is not, they don't teach that in school. <laughs> no, that doesn't, that doesn't come with, Hey, this is a case study. No, the there's no case study. And then there's some case study on some foolishness. Now, <laughs> now there is, there are case studies on how we influence behavior. Right. And so some of this, you know, is looking a little weird to me, but, uh, and I even question the people that think that is a, a reality that Lysol can prevent COVID-19. 
But forget all of that. The team that had to sit there, I, I when I heard that, I said, well, what's going on here? They're going to have to really sit down and release, do a full release and full mm -hmm. statements on the uh how it, this erroneous information right uh, so I, I think uh, first there's no such things as alternative, as alternative facts number one True. number two um i think we're encountering things that even some of the most seasoned people were not prepared for because i bet you lysol did not think they would have to do anything <laughs> nationally uh to to tell people not to drink that for the prevention of of this you know horrible 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 virus so uh, corporations have uh, had their share of scandals where PR people have uh, had to bail them out, right? You know, tell them messaging, message correctly. Um, how how do you think that has uh, changed? Um, do they do they listen to their advisors more in, in this uh, day and age, or uh, do they decide to go their own way? Okay, we have a joke in PR. Nobody wants PR around until there's a crisis. Okay, until something breaks yeah. Yeah. or until they want to influence something. Now, for the most part, we're respected at the table. Yeah. Okay. We're respected. Mm -hmm. So I, my peers and I are, all, but most of the time they don't want us around until something's about to go haywire or has right. gone haywire. They want us to fix it. So what you have to do with an organization is hopefully give some best practices before you have to fix it. Mm -hmm. Okay. That's the first thing. But um, you're, you're, that's what you're hired to do. So you're hired for crisis, you're hired for marketing, you're hired for external, internal. There are a number of things that happen. What I see now are companies for the most part are honoring um, a code of ethics. I, I, uh, what we're seeing on a national level and what we're seeing reported in the news is very different than what happens around the table every day. And I think that's a blessing that we have not uh, been totally infiltrated by this huge mound of horse doo-doo. I'm saying that because uh, it's forced. Right. We appreciate that. Uh, for the most part, though, people are honoring and still going by a code of ethics. Uh, one of the things you can see that's changed, which you can tell I was laughing with my mom um, a couple of weeks ago. Oreo, the cookies, Oreo cookies are mm -hmm. at Nabisco. And I think they're it's a it's craft all together. Somebody correct me if I'm wrong. But I know it's Nabisco and they have changed their whole messaging to reflect people shelter in place. So all of their commercials are how fun it is to eat Oreos at home. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. And those and those small videos and short videos. So that lets me know that people are still sitting around the table. Mm -hmm. We're still trying to figure out how to influence and how to give positive messages. What we're also seeing is a softer message. Now. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. We're seeing that this is unprecedented. We've had 50,000, almost 60,000 deaths yeah. in the yeah. last few weeks. Yeah. We've had cities decimated, okay, decimated. We had 30 million people apply for unemployment. Wow. 30 million, I think is what I saw today. Wow. Um, and so when you're talking on that level, uh, the PR table usually is gonna be the first one to get cut because there's no budget for us. Right. But I'm happy to see my colleagues figuring out a way to still push their brands, push their marketing and find a softer, kinder way to do that. Yep, we all need some Oreos right about now. Okay. <laughs> we do. Oreos and then Oreos. some some working out cuz lemon Oreos. Yes. You, you, right, I'm offering lemon yes. Oreos. Now, uh, now if, you, if your blood sugar is uh, is off the charts, stay away from the cookies now. Right. <laughs> but uh in this time period, it was cool to see that. So, you're asking about what's going on at the table. Right now, probably the biggest thing that's happening is a are they going to have a job number 1. Mm -hmm. Okay, with 30 million people filing for unemployment. Okay, so my peers, we know that the marketing PR budget is going to be cut probably usually first. Right. Number two, um, if you are at the table, that, that messaging now is all centered around something that was unknown to us starting the beginning of the year. Mm -hmm. So it takes some patience, some understanding, because yeah. we're all right now, we are looking for the flashlight in the dark. Yeah. Okay, we have no idea. And we have to, of course, be mindful of that that we're, we've got business as usual, but people's families are sick. Yes. They're mm -hmm. dying in all of this. Um, and death is something that has become normal mm. or they're normalizing it from this virus. Mm. Um, and it, death, it can be peaceful and all that good stuff. But from something like this, that was an unknown, that was something that was in China and came from uh, what they say, bats. Right. And now right. we're watching uh, people That's in our peer group pass away. So for that's the human side of this. So as a PR person, I've got to sit down when I think of messaging 
and think about what's happening to to the hu humans. to uh, humans. Mm -hmm. yeah. Right? Yeah, the it's the not about a message. It. The human side of this matters. I can't influence behavior if I don't understand human nature. Right. And what you're Absolutely. seeing now, marketing companies. The other thing, um, unless you got another question, because I can keep on going about yeah, it. No, we do. We Sorry. have some other questions. Okay. Uh, Sorry, uh, no, 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 we got you. We got you. It's all, it's all good. So how has the uh, digital marketing communications uh, and, and that technology part of it changed the PR landscape? Like are more companies handling their uh, PR in a different way because they can go direct to consumers in a way that they didn't before? Well, yeah, what you've seen mostly, well, the first thing I've seen um, now, my sector in education um, is a little bit different. But what I've seen in other sectors is the auto industry. First of all, now you can buy a car online. Now, you've always what? been able to buy cars online. Right. Okay? So that's nothing new. But Carvana and then some of these other, that's something that we know of, right? With the cute little mm -hmm. elevator thing, you hit the button and the car did it, did it, right? Yep. But now you've got local dealers that say, you know what, we are, we're going to honor social distancing. You can pick this car up. That's digital marketing one on one. Click what you want, find it, pay for it, get it financed and yeah. we'll deliver it to you with I don't have to touch, see anybody and we'll leave the keys for you. So yeah. the beauty of that is we are now encountering in terms of marketing and all and, and communications. We're encountering things that up until now weren't even possible, mm -hmm. but they said it wasn't possible. Right. Right. Yeah. So that allows for the creativity to flow and people like us who are creative, we can figure out all kinds of things. If you give me the comfort of my home to, to figure that out. Right. I get yeah. to sit here and think about all the things I can do where people don't have to see one another. Right. So that probably has opened up the doors for a number of things in terms of communication or in terms of marketing. But the first thing I can think of is the auto industry. Um, the second thing is now. So not only do I get to buy this car online, I get to defer the payments for 90 days. <laughs> right now that's probably some connection to the, the auto yeah. industry is getting some money or there's something going on with that right but they realize if they people buy these cars and the things that are happening they may not be able to pay for the car mm -hmm. so we're going to give you 90 days now whatever happens there's probably some other stuff that goes along with that but when did you ever hear that it was, you could take you could buy a car and not pay for it the next for month 90 days. days deferment and all companies, their marketing campaigns now are buy our cars because the cars are sitting, ain't nobody driving. Remember? Mm -hmm. Right. We're not driving. We're home. We're walking. Supposed yeah. to be. Right. Right. So they've got to sell this. So they've got to figure out a way to get these cars, these two, these 2020 cars, and get ready for 2021. So I think it's beautiful, <laughs> actually. Uh, but isn't it funny how a worldwide pandemic causes people to think about how they're going to sell things a little bit differently and how they're going to communicate it? Absolutely. A lot of businesses have had to try to figure out what they're going to, what are they going to do differently uh, now that the world has uh, shifted and kind of pivoted. It it happened fast uh, for me. Did you did you find that it happened kind of quickly or just? Um, I I can say this safely uh, in terms of the K through twenty work that I do. We uh, had to literally shut schools down in twenty four hours, and yeah. I'm not the only one that was involved with a team that had to do that. So. Schools across the world, and especially here in the U.S., had to make quick decisions on how to accommodate education. Mm -hmm. um, and that speaks to the beauty of the teams and the smart people that sit at these tables to make these decisions. Um, it speaks to um, there's some things that we're realizing. Digital divide is one. But it, the mm -hmm. fact that we could all uh, come together and figure out whatever was the best thing we needed to do. Uh, to accommodate whatever sector you're in. So yes, they're, we're having to figure out some things on the fly. And some of those decisions we're making are great. The downside, at least in education, is now we've got all these kids at home and college students, but now guess what? There's nowhere to do this work. Mm -hmm. okay. Okay. We don't okay. have Wi-Fi. There's no Wi-Fi everywhere or mm -hmm. access to it. Mm -hmm. You got five kids at home and one computer and one phone. Mm -hmm. yeah. How are they supposed to learn? and get the same instruction. How does this work for our kids? Um, and so those are the questions that I guess now will have to be answered. But having to make quick decisions, um, yeah, a lot of the quick decisions will have to be made. Now we're gonna have to figure out on the back end, the fallout from these quick decisions, especially in my sector in education, what's gonna happen now? Mm -hmm. And the well-being of these children. So you're not just talking about learning. You can't learn if you've seen trauma and you're fearful. Okay, you can't learn if you're hungry. Right. You can't learn if you've seen trauma. So it, communicating that to what it is my job now to communicate those stories 
and to figure out a way and strategize through that and understand that some of these kids have seen some stuff that we never, ever thought of. I'm sure there's not been a, a crisis communication plan that exists that has had this pandemic in that plan. Uh, very rarely would you find a company <laughs> to have a pandemic, a worldwide pandemic plan. Right. So those uh, people who are thinking outside the box and are compassionate as well as intelligent. Yes. See, I would much rather hire at this point. I teach and I work, but give me a 2.5 that can work and learn is compassionate rather than a 4.0 who knows everything with no compassion. That's, the people that's who sit at the that. table now need to understand we are affected in more ways than one. So coming up with a PR strategy, I can do that all day. But can right. you exercise that 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 care and concern that you need in order to influence the behavior? Mm -hmm. okay? Absolutely. And understand that. So what do you think about the new generation of uh, PR professionals that are coming up that uh, that you are training, Sorry. like the tools that they have available to them in this new world? What's your outlook for them? <laughs> Why are y'all laughing at me? Okay, so let's say this. First of all, let's admit we're old guys. Okay, okay, okay. Okay, okay let's admit this. Yeah. So we have become our parents. I'm happy. I got good parents, so I'm happy for that. I'm if I am Tyrone and Yvonne, all right. Yeah. The good stuff. Okay. Yes. But 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 you all we we existed and went to college before social media, before the internet. I tell my students all the time. I, the undergrad, well, there was no internet. Right. There were no. There were cell phones that were look that was looked like a brick. Okay. Uh, right. Big phones. You couldn't <laughs> put it in your pocket. Right. There was no Instagram. There was none of that. So the first thing that before I make a judgment call on the upcoming crew of leaders, I've got to admit that when I walked into this, the world was a totally different place. Okay. So my outlook and my drive for this is different mm -hmm. because I, it's it's just not the same. Now, what I do see um, in this up and coming group uh, that I, I'm supportive of is they have a relaxed uh, uh, demeanor mm -hmm. that I appreciate. They mm -hmm. are not as driven. And sometimes we've, I don't know about you guys, but I've been sick because I was driven. Mm -hmm. Okay, I didn't eat because I was driven. Right. I didn't. Mm -hmm. I let people call me at all times of the night because I was driven. Uh, I was sending emails at two o'clock in the morning because I was driven. Mm -hmm. Now, do I have those results? Some results from that, yes. But I also had illness from that. I had headaches. Mm -hmm. I had a number of other things. Mm -hmm. So what I see from them is, hey, they they they're willing to say, I need a break. I need a break. I need some boundaries. Okay, I like, respect that. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. What I don't see is they don't have a lot of drive. Okay, mm -hmm. so I'm you're, you're like I need you to get excited about this. They're also very mm -hmm. cutthroat. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, um, well, we work a little bit better as a team, but because we promote these individual brands, you uh -huh. know, everybody's an individual brand. So, because of that, people see themselves as individuals. It's not a bad thing, but it does not um, help them see um, life from a different perspective, right? You teamwork all yes. that, so yeah. they, they'll just say, "Forget you." The other thing that uh, I see in this group is they're able to do a lot of digital work. Mm -hmm. But you will never, ever, ever be just good old old fashioned writing. Mm. OK, as a, I am a trained journalist, first and foremost, the fundamentals, mm -hmm. the fundamentals of this. And what I want to see students do and upcoming journalists and PR folk and uh, print and broadcast is understand that first and foremost, as a journalist, as a communicator, you need to know how to write and write effectively. Text talk. Uh, hashtag stuff, all the short lived stuff that, that's that's not enduring. Um, mm -hmm. and what I'd like to see more of, I, I love their, their ability to say no, I love their ability to get in and get out if they need to, but I want to see them uh, develop themselves as writers. You will never be a stable or a productive PR person if you can't write. So, posting all those beautiful photos and videos on social media is not a way. <laughs> to sustain a good job. It's a way to probably get in the door, but you'll stay entry level. Because if you understand this, first of all, social media platforms are changing every day. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that's, that's my thought. Sure. That's just my initial thoughts. No, very good thoughts. A whole lot there left to for us to continue to unpack. We're gonna have to have you back. So we can do really? further I get to come back. It. Oh, absolutely. Uh, there's oh a wealth I get to of come knowledge. Back. I told and experience that we want to mine and glean and pass it on. So 
we we appreciate you, Cam, for spending this time with us. I appreciate you, so you much. having me. Continue to be safe. I'm going right. to try. I'm going to try. I'm going to try. Wash cool, your hands, you. guys. Wash your hands. Yes, Wash yes, hands. yes. Right. <laughs> All right. We'll see you. All right. Bye. Bye-bye. Right, bye. 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 All right, man. Lot, lot there. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, man. Oh, that's, that's you know, I did PR as an undergrad. And yeah. um, so there's a, a ton there that we could go all day and we want to pass it on to others. But for those of you who are looking to uh, further your own business success and learn and be able to disseminate the right messages to the right people at the right time, uh, you need to have your digital ecosystem house in order. So, G, how do they how do we help them do that? Well, uh, what you we have some tools that are available to them and that are free to them uh, for the rest of this month. Uh, this is we're coming up to the end of the month here. Uh, so uh, get and avail yourselves of that. And you can go to on the brink marketing group dot com slash snapshot and uh, get those tools that will start the process of giving you a look inside your business, a 360 degree look inside and around your business so that you can begin to um, take hold and and fill out your uh, digital landscape, make sure that it is in order. Because again, we are coming through this. We have been saying this for the last uh, little over a month now that we're going to come out on the other side of this. But the businesses that are prepared, ready, that have their digital house in order, they're going to uh, be thriving on the other side of this and not just simply trying to survive. So please avail yourself of these tools. Go to onthebrinkmediagroup.com slash snapshot. Um, and get in and get a look at your business. Make sure that your Google My Business is in order and your social media um, so that as you, uh, some of you small business owners, as you are doing your own public relations, that you are talking to your uh, your audience. Absolutely. Good stuff, my man. All right, man. We are going to wrap it right there. And I'm going to say thank you so much. Thank you, guys. See you next month. Yes. Sorry, not that one. More we'll see how we are. Where are we going to see them? Uh, next month. Next month? Today's the end of the month. Is it really? Already. Meet Say Jen. So. Jen's a... I don't want that one either. <laughs> don't put this one. <laughs> Be productive. <laughs>